Have you ever wondered what it's like to thrift shop with kids? I'm gonna give you a peek into a real life what my life is like when I thrift shop with my kids. Normally when I film us thrifting in a store, I usually put on some fun music and I kind of speed stuff up and I cut out all the annoying parts. But today I thought my son was so fun and my daughter was so cooperative and everything was so great that I would just show you guys. So if you want uh, to a little peek into a thrifter's life when she has kids, then you might want to stay tuned. Yeah. See? Oh, you videotaped. Mom, okay, you can look and see if you can find follow something. Me and, uh, show them. Yeah. Thank you. Elizabeth George. That's not the same one. Oh, this is cool, Jeff. Come here. How to write and draw your own comics. Look inside. Look inside. Open it. So you draw oh, that? Yeah. Did they draw that? <laughs> it's young adult. It's cute though. Okay, slow down. So my daughter and I decided that we were gonna go to the thrift store today and see if we could find a book to read this week. We have not done a reading haul or a what we read this month in a while. And I know you guys like that kind of stuff. So we decided to do this today for you. So here's what we're gonna do. I've got my little thrift store haul that I'm gonna show you guys. We're going to challenge ourselves to read one of the books that we got at the thrift store that we have to read that this week and then tell you guys about it at the end of the video. Do you think we can do it? I hope so. I'm just gonna show you a real quick little thrift haul and show you what we got. The one thrift store is 50% off books. So that was amazing. We don't usually go on Mondays because Monday is like our busiest day because that's our co-op day. So we don't usually get to go that day, but we did and it was great. And I didn't have my two whiny pants kids that don't like to thrift. I didn't have them with me. So it was more fun. Okay, don't tell them. <laughs> All right, let me show you what I got real quick. So actually first thing, as soon as I walked in, you know the return rack, I've told you guys this before, the return rack is the place to check because usually somebody else tried on it, maybe it didn't fit, but it was probably cute enough for them to try. I did not have time to try it on, I forgot. I actually put it in my cart and I was like, I'll try it on at the end and then we walked to the store and then we had to go. So I hope it's not gonna be too big, but it's this really cute, um, it's like a tan. Yeah, it's like a tan, kind of. I don't know what color that is tan or mauve or something. Um, it's like a stretchy shirt, but it's got cute little like bell sleeves. So I hope it'll fit me. I'll try it on and I'll let you guys know. But if it's too big for me, I'll probably give it to my mother-in-law because I think she would probably like it. It was only $3.50, but for a super cute short sleeve shirt, as long as it fits, that's a great deal. Let's get to the books because you guys came here for books. All right, so I let my son pick out a book too. I told him I want him to read a book this week with us. So he got this one that actually looked really cool. Tuning into the weather. He's huge into the weather, but it's actually, it's really tiny, but it has like a lot of sentences, like a lot of paragraphs, even though it's a really skinny book, but he just loves the weather. So I think this will be really cool. It talks about like predicting the weather, being a weatherman. So anyway, I think he will love that. So he's going to try to read that this week. And these were all half price. I think children's books, I feel like these are like 50 cents and then maybe 75 cents for hardback books. This one should have been 75 cents and then half price, which was amazing. This is a food atlas. Look how big it is. It's huge. This was super cool. So it's filled with maps of food from around the world. How neat is that? We actually have a map book like that, but it's not food. It's got like stuff to do. Let me see if I can show you guys. Isn't that neat? 
such a fun book. Anyway, so he picked that out. So I thought that was really cool. I found a ton, 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 ton of books. My daughter actually didn't find anything at this store, but we went to the other store and she found a book there. So I'll show you hers in a minute. This one, um, Beth Moore, see this was $9.97 on sale somewhere. And I think I paid, I think it's $1.50. So it would have been 75 cents which is not bad for a book. So this is Jesus, The One and Only by Beth Moore. Sounded really good. I used to like listen to her and love her and a book about Jesus, I think you can't be controversial. It'll be fine. This is John Eldridge, which also uh, I've heard really good things about. I feel like I read his books in college probably. This is a tiny little book called Epic, The Story God is Telling. And it was really cool. Just talking about like when you go through hard times, there's a reason for it. And I just thought this would be really good. Here's another one, Beverly LaHaye. I remember Tim LaHaye was really big when my mom, like when I was a kid, my mom like loved Tim LaHaye and like the Left Behind series and stuff. This is spiritual power for your family, how to partner with the Holy Spirit and raise a loving family. It just sounded really good. And with these being so cheap, like this is a softback. So I think it was 75 cents. So it was half price off of that. So this was, they were all super cheap. This one looked good, Shadows of the Past. I've never read anything by Patricia Bradley, but our library near us has these yellow tags that are for family reading. So it's so helpful because then you know this is a clean or Christian book. This is Revel, which I think is a, a Christian publishing. But if you're somebody like me who doesn't read non-Christian books, there were a handful of these and I'm like, oh, well, that sounds good. And it looks like a really good, um, a really good book. So I have to... I'll have to decide which one I'm going to read this week. This one is John and Stacy Eldridge, which we've read some of their books before. I'm trying to think of what, oh yeah, he did Wild at Heart, Captivating. I think I have that one too. So anyway, this one just sounded really good. It was Finding Your Way to Something Beautiful in Your Marriage. Just sounded like a good, encouraging marriage book. Here was another one with a yellow tag. So I picked it up and um, it sounded really good. Hidden Places by Lynn Austin. This was like an, it sounds like it's historical fiction. And it's about this woman who is recently widowed and has to take care of this orchard all by herself. And um, I don't know, it sounds like a really neat story. Different from what I normally read, I'm trying to like branch out. This one sounds really good. Um, it's a, it's called a couple's devotional, 30 minute weekly devotions uh, to grow in faith and joy after I do to ever after. So just a um, marriage, stay married devotional. So that sounded good. Then I got, oh, this one sounded really good. The Feathered Bone by Julia Cantrell. Um, this also is Thomas Nelson and it's it was yellow, so it was easy to spot. This one was, was is about a girl whose her daughter's like friend disappears and it's just like a, a heavy, like the mom trying to get past that and the daughter and everybody like struggling with this stuff. And it's just fiction. It's not like a murder mystery or something like that. but. It just sounded really interesting and I really liked the cover. So that sounded good. And then this one, Amending at the Edge by Jane Kirkpatrick. I don't think I've read anything by Jane Kirkpatrick. This was an Oregon Trail, like 1850s older book. And I just kind of love that idea that I love that storyline and I love that kind of historical fiction. So that sounded neat. The only other thing I got there, I actually thought was really cool. This is a Bible cover and it's leather and it was only a dollar. So I just thought it was neat and um, I don't know. I'll see if it fits my Bible or somebody's Bible. But for a dollar, I thought it was cool with the dove on the front. Okay, so that's all we got from that store. So I don't know, it was like $15 or something. Let me see. Yeah, so with all those books, it was $16.11. With all those books and, um, and the shirt and the toys. So that's not bad. Forgot my daughter got a shirt there um, that says... London, England, I think on it. It's really cute. So that was only, uh, it was a $3 shirt. It was only $1.50 and um, it's already in the washing machine. So I'll put a picture right here. And that was that shirt, super cute. Okay, so then we went to Goodwill real quick, which is down the road and I'll show you what we found. The first thing is silly and ridiculous, but the puppy, we love the puppy. Okay, so I had a 25% off coupon. So that helped with this. So this little stuffed pink airplane, <laughs> and it's like, I, I think they have like this new section, this section of like new stuff. And um, it's just a soft, really cute airplane. 
And so we got it for the puppy because he loves to take my son's stuffed animals. So I thought, let's just get him. He has a couple little ones, but this is like huge and I think he'll love it and have fun with it. So anyway, this was only $2.97. I found this cute hangman game. This is neat. Um, everybody likes hangman, but it's got all the letters and then it's got this little guy and it's all magnetic. And then you can like keep score over here and just move these guys and put them down here when you're spelling the the word and I just thought it was a cute thing. I love to find stuff for uh, my son to do on Sunday nights or in the car. So that was fun for him. That was $1.87. My daughter found a book, The Maze Runner. This is something, have you guys read this? Let me know if you've read it and if you think it's good. I feel like she tried to read this when she was younger, like quite a bit younger and we ran into some language not I don't think it was bad language I think it was like substitute language which I usually don't I didn't let her do especially when she was that age but she's 15 I'm like if you want to read it it's fine so that was 94 cents cheap book hopefully it's good she got a cup for 37 cents which I'll get in a second this was what was dollar 87 this little thing I saw this and I thought of my son because he uh likes to listen to music like on YouTube, usually it's praise music or something like that at bedtime. But I was like, if we can get away from that and he can listen to this, it's like a little music box. But also the way his mind works, this like shows, I don't really wanna start it because then it'll play for the rest of my video. Oops, oh, that's maybe how you stop it. But it just plays music, which some people might think is creepy, like, uh, it makes me think of scary movies, but he was like, oh, mom, I love that. So anyway, isn't that cute? So he loved it and said he'd use it at bedtime. I think that's what stops it. That's kind of cool. So that was $2.50, but it was marked down to like $1.87 because of my coupon. And then my daughter got a cute cup. Let me show you. Here's the cup. It's a glass cup. It actually didn't come with the straw. She has the straw already. There were actually a bunch of these. There were like five or six, but this was the only one with a lid. And um, I, I was like, I don't know if they'll want... I didn't know, like I thought about getting it for my other girls, but I don't think they'd want it just like that, which they could have. We really don't need any more cups though, by the way. It's just a really cute green. So anyway, she's already using it and she loved it. So now I'm gonna look through my books, decide which one I'm gonna read and have her decide. And well, she only bought one. So I am assuming that's the one she's gonna read. And then I will report back to you guys in a little bit on what we thought of her book. So I thought that would be fun. So we are gonna try to get it done in one week because today's Monday and I usually put out a video on Monday. So I'm gonna to try to read it actually by like Friday so we can film and edit and have it out on Monday. Do you think I can do it? <laughs> we'll see, hopefully. Okay, we'll be back. So at the end of the week, I told you guys that we're gonna to try to read our book that we got at the thrift store before Friday. So we started on Monday, today is Saturday. Okay, I just got done cutting the grass. So does my hair look good? I wonder if I have grass in my hair, I probably do. Um, it's really nice out there, but it's still pretty muddy. Excuse my everything. Okay, so two things. So the first one will surprise you. I didn't finish my book. I'll give you a little summary of what I thought and tell you how far I am. <laughs> and then the second one, my daughter, I was planning on having her come in the video, but she's actually making dinner right now since I was cutting the grass and she wasn't prepared to be on video. So I'm just gonna tell you what she thought about her book. So this was the book that she got, The Maze Runner. She, remember I told you guys that I thought this had some like substitute language in it that we just weren't a big fan of, especially when she was young. This time I was like, it's fine if she doesn't, if it doesn't bother her, it's not like she's gonna start using, you know, weird words, language, whatever. So I just let her read it. So she got a little bit into it and she did not like it. She said, so first of all, I guess it's about these boys. There's like no girls in the beginning of the story because she's not here. I can't even give you the premise of the story. All I know is it's boys. Now I get that boys can be rude to each other, probably have this like, you know, the way they talk to each other, stuff like that is maybe like a stereotype of boys. I don't think it has to be that way. I think boys can be polite and respectful but this was like the stereotypical boy. So they use language like, cause she actually pointed this out. And she's like, mom, this is kind of crazy. Okay, so here we go. Here's, he heard noises above, voices and fear squeezed his chest. Look at that shank. How old is he? Looks like a clunk in a t-shirt. You're the clunk, shuck face. Dude, it smells like feet down here. Hope you enjoyed the one-way trip, greenie. Ain't no ticket back, bro. Just the way they talk to each other. 
the shuck face. Uh, she was like, I don't, that sounds like they're trying to, uh, like, you know, substitute for another word. There was another one. Oh, then there's shut your hole. Some people probably don't care and would think I was dumb. See, here's another one right here. This is all throughout. I told you, shuck face. I feel like that is just, instead of using curse words, they're substituting it for another word. I don't want my son saying stuff like that. Um, but I guess it's just like, oh, boys will be boys. This is how they talk. There's another one right here. Where is it? Right there. Shuck it. I don't think that's necessary. I feel like, why don't you just cuss if you're going to be using words that rhyme and mean the same thing, you know? She read like a few pages and then she was like, this is dumb. I have no interest in this. It's crazy because she does have some friends that like it. But if she doesn't want to read stuff like that, then I'm glad. So we're probably going to toss this book. It just seems dumb. Waste of time. I feel like, you know, sometimes in the homeschool um, community, they talk about twaddle. Like this doesn't even seem like twaddle. This just seems like a waste of time, in my opinion. I don't think any sort of knowledge is going to be gained by reading a dumb book like that. So I'm glad she stopped. So on to my book. I chose The Feathered Bone because it just sounded really interesting. I didn't read the whole book, but I'm loving it. So I'm actually, let's see what page I'm on. So it's Saturday. The hard part is I do teach a literature class for high schoolers at my co-op and we're reading The Hobbit. So not only did I do I have regular life to do, this is why I struggle to read, because it's hard to find time. We've been just busy running around. Sometimes at the end of the night, I will try to read, but um, trying to stay awake is difficult too. I'm really interested in this book, but it was just a struggle. And then I had to read my, I had to read like five chapters of The Hobbit. What teacher would assign five chapters of The Hobbit? But um, I had to do that in order to teach the class on Monday. So anyway, I was busy. I didn't have time to read it all, but I am a little ways in. I read, you know, a good bit for me. So I'm on page 74. So I'll give you a quick summary because so far this is really, really good. This book is about, I think it's a sixth grade class down in New Orleans. It was a little bit confusing at first to me because I, I could tell it was a class trip, but I didn't know if they were coming from like Ohio going down to New Orleans or if they were lived in Louisiana and maybe were just going to New Orleans for a, um, a field trip. So I think that's more like what it was. It seemed like they were kind of in the area and they were just going to that specific city to experience Mardi Gras for a field trip. So anyway, they talk about how crazy it is because Mardi Gras, I've never experienced it, but I've heard it's pretty crazy. And so they've got like a one-to-one -one ratio with the students that came with some parents and teachers. And they're like watching the kids like hawks and all this stuff. Some of the moms there are friends. I could like relate, you know, uh, so pro all these moms are probably about my age. They've got, you know, sixth graders. I have a fifth grader and a seventh grader. Anyway, they're going to all this stuff and there's like weird people down there. There's like fortune tellers and voodoo. They like kept talking about voodoo and like all the weird stuff that's probably happening down there in Mardi Gras. So you got to be careful, you know? So this um, mom and her best friend are there and their two girls are best friends or daughters. And so the one mom has to go back to work. She works at the church or something. So she has to leave to go back to work. Um, the mom, who's the one telling the story, is um, she's like, oh, I'll keep an eye on your daughter, no problem. You know, the girls are best friends. It's like, no big deal, I'll watch her. She watches her like a hawk. She's like, keeping an eye, like I am. This is how I am. I'm always like, where's uh, where's this person? Where's this, you know, keeping an eye on them. That's just how I've always been. Eventually, you know, by the back of the book that somebody's gonna get kidnapped. I will say, I usually read murder mysteries and things like that, that the action happens right away. Like sometimes it's the first page somebody gets murdered or sometimes it's within a couple pages. This one felt like it took forever and I feel bad because I'm like, oh my word, when is this girl gonna get kidnapped? Which sounds terrible. But you know, I just was like, okay, you've given us a lot of description of the people and the places and um, you know, okay, I get the class trip and all the stuff you guys have done. But anyway, it had a lot of building, almost a little too much for me. But we finally got to the point where the daughter was they couldn't find her. Everybody got on the bus and the daughter wasn't there. And it was heartbreaking because honestly, this is probably my biggest fear as a mom. You know, there's all kinds of fears of drownings, of, you know, house catching on fire, of kid getting hit by a car, whatever. I've always had a fear of someone kidnapping one of my kids. And, um, I've always been like one that watches them like a hawk in the store, going down our road. Like anyway, I'm just uh, trying not to be, what do they call it now? A helicopter parent. I'm not, I just 
have always been scared of this happening. So this really hit hard. Once it actually happened, I knew it was going to happen. It broke my heart because it's the mom. It's like me and my best friend, you know, and I told her I'd watch her kid and her kid is missing and it's all on me. Like, why wasn't I watching her? She turned her back for one minute, let the girls go to the bathroom. They were together. The girl disappeared. Anyway, it is so sad. And can you imagine having to tell your best friend that you can't find her kid or the other way around that your best friend was supposed to be watching your kid? And you're like, what do you mean you thought lost her? Where is she? So anyway, it's heartbreaking. It's very sad. So I don't know how the rest of the book will be, but I am enjoying it. And um, you might wonder why I enjoy, I don't know. I mean, it's real life. I do like, I don't know what, I, I don't know why I enjoy stuff like this, but I, it's, it's just, it really draws you in. And I don't actually know if they find her. I don't know um, the end of the story, but I know it's very heavy. So it's a really good story. So it ended up being super, super good. Um, so I'm going to finish it. I'll let you guys know some other time how it went. So I won with reading the most, but I did not finish my book. So let me know a book that you have read lately because we could use a suggestion so that we could, um, maybe something we could try to read next week or something. I hope, okay, here's my plan. I, um, I already have a, a, a little list of books that I've actually read in the last few months and we're going to do a video on what we read, but I just haven't, ha I haven't gotten time for me and my daughter to sit down and film together. So, um, I'm hoping to do that next week. So hopefully, Hopefully, fingers crossed. Hopefully we'll have a what we read lately kind of video between me and my 15 year old and we'll share stuff that we've read lately. I have a handful of books. You might be surprised how many I've read. So, and hopefully maybe I'll have this finished by then and then I can tell you guys how it was. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. Hopefully it'll be next week. Wish me luck. And um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I'm keeping it real. I, I, a lot of times fail at my goals, but I will keep setting goals. So, um, at least, you know, you're not alone if you failed at something this week. So did I. Yay. All right. Have a good week. I will see you guys next time. Bye.